Seasons greetings everybody, I am One Proper Varian and today we return here to Manalords, to our beautiful world where we have just created a German settlement. You can see it is coming along nicely. It is an Angerdorf, which means that there is a central plaza in the shape of an eye. And this central plaza belongs to, well, the general population and will be indeed the spiritual and literal center of our village going forward. We've also placed our manor quite far away here on this beautiful, beautiful cliffside. I mean, honestly, again, this is my favorite element of the entire map, I think, here, except maybe for the river further down, but we're going to get to that one, I think, later. We are today going to continue jumping into the manor. I want to upgrade what is going on there. I want to maybe get a bit of a bigger retinue. Uh, I do wager that we're going to see some banditry every now and again. And then we are also going to take a good, good long look right here at the German village, because this one will be the first village to actually have level 2 houses. Our Slavic village, far, far in the distance, is, well, essentially just a rural agricultural settlement, making it so that they don't really have any artisans. Although, I'm gonna be honest with you, that might change. Um, I think it would be a good idea to have at the very least one, and let's find it, there you go, at least one brewery in the Slavic settlement. I think that would fit. They have a beautiful tavern down there in their Rundling as well. So yeah, I think we're going to gun into that direction. Now as it is currently winter, um, I would like to take a moment and put down the fields for this village and for the manor itself. I will basically separate them here by this little forest right there. I think that is a perfect barricade for the two. And then we're just going to decide on what we will be doing. And I think you can see why I placed the village where I did. We have a great surrounding area when it comes to the fields. We can have fields right here for flax. Uh, barley looking great as well. And then rye, I mean, it works everywhere. Similar to Emma here. But the most important part is that this this and this. All of the surrounding areas of this village have huge potential for fields. This can be a very prosper uh, prosperous location. Now, I will also tell you that when it comes to the fields, I am taking the biggest liberties to how I draw them because I want them to essentially look good. Uh, it is true that mostly we would want very straight and very long fields like this because this would allow the oxen to actually do very long paths without having to turn, without having to do much of anything and being able to basically prepare these fields very, very quickly and very easily. Now, again, like I said, we're going to go, you know, and... Uh, at least blow this off a little bit. I want it to be beautiful. I want it to really be something that we like looking at, especially when we pass through it, you know, while we visit our settlements. Um, ah, I, I really hate what we're doing here. Let me put down a couple of fields and we're going to see how it turns out. All right, so let's take a look at this. I think what we are going to do here is we're going to lead one more road directly to the mill to keep it, you know, very, very accessible. I think that is one of the more important elements. We could even, quite frankly, I'm going to just, we're going to close it off here. I think these will be the fields. Oh, that is, I, I don't like that. That is a very unnatural bend right there. The fields will basically be limited. And I got to correct this. That is hideous. They will be limited by the paths. That is a pretty natural order. There you go. And that gives us some good field shapes here for sure. Yeah, what I'm basically doing right here, by the way, is I am parceling this out. I mostly, to be quite frank with you, care about the aesthetics of these elements. I think that is the by far most important element. We have the granary right here. And thank you, by the way, in the comment section. It is not pronounced the way that I was pronouncing it. I had no idea. And we're going to go ahead and basically just parcel these out in a fashion that hopefully makes it for a nice sight when you walk through it, right? So, with the roads put down, let's start putting down a couple of fields here. I think this entire thing right here will just be... No, not you. Uh, you will just be one field. I, I think that should be golden. Yeah, okay, you know what? I'll take that. That's completely fine. Then this obviously is the effectively same deal. Boom. Uh, over here, honestly, uh, I think we're going to cut in like this. Because then we have a pretty long field right here. It's not exactly equal, but good enough in my books. Nope, don't like that at all. Oh, I really hate that. Wow. Uh, do not snap, I beg you. Oh my god. There you go. You know what? I'll, I'll live with that. Oh, this field is actually exactly one Morgan. You love to see it. Now, let me take a look at you. There you go. That is perfect. That is a nice little square right there. All right, all right, all right. I think we're getting somewhere here. You can see these fields. They are pretty, pretty big, but that is just because we have so many oxen. They will be working this non-stop. Speaking of which, by the way, uh, let's actually get one more oxen slot right here. And after we do that, where am I going to put you? I think uh, this seems about perfect. Yeah, there you go. After we've done that, we have a granary right here like we talked about. And all right, and now it is time that we actually place the farmhouses. Um... When it comes to the villagers' farmhouse, I think I really like this position 
Yeah, there you go. That Oh, nope. That is... What the hell? There we go. That looks good to me. There you're getting a pretty central farmers. We have a pathway towards this direction if we really need it. And this one is, of course, meant for the village itself. Then up here, where the uh, mana is, I think I'm just going to put it right here. Currently, we're not using the full mana potential. It's basically just this. There's more going on here. Great field positions, just for the record. But I basically just want this farmhouse close to the granary. There you go. And then once it is built, I'm going to tell them to only work the fields that are actually relevant to them. For example, I can do this right here as well. And we should be doing this so that they don't walk off to the fields over there and work them. Uh, I can set a working location and we can make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm going to say you work this entire area. So now the Slavic village will work all of this. Kaseritz has a particular area to work. Oh, and that actually brings me to two interesting topics here. First of all, I do think that we are going to upgrade at the very least one single building right here to level two eventually entirely because, well, we could just have a brewer in there. They are, of course, working with barley here as well. You know what? Just because I'm thinking about it just now. Yeah, and I think to seal the deal that we are going to do that, I'm going to put down a malt house here as well. The other thing is that I had to take down this building, believe it or not. I was forced. It was an absolute necessity for the survival of this city and of this playthrough because this building somehow was housing three families despite only being capable of housing two and as long as it existed nobody would be migrating to my town i don't know why that is the case but i got rid of it i fixed it that way so you know what let's be happy let's not worry about it too much and like i said eventually we're going to upgrade this place here as well get at least one brewer in there and then we will have a truly, truly gorgeous local city here as well. All right, and now that we have put down these fields, um, let's take a look. What else do we have to do in the city? The farmhouse will, of course, be built. More people will now finally be moving in. My god, uh, took you long enough. Let's take a look at this. We're going to have more oxen come in as well. I will, of course, put more people on here. I have, by the way, decided to up our taxes at least... Oh, nope, that's not... It's only in 10% steps. Okay. I thought it wasn't going to be in 10% steps. We're going to take in 10%. It really only will matter once we, you know, build the level 2 locations right here. But obviously we're going to do that now. So that is a great step forward for sure. Let's upgrade these houses actually. This is the city core right here. I really like to upgrade this. You can see they are very close to the marketplace. They are very close to the church. Yeah, you are all level 2s. Good for you. I'm also going to go ahead and immediately upgrade the storehouse here in the granary, uh, just so that we will have a proper amount of what is needed. The forager hut is having some problems. I just don't really care. Honestly, I think we're kind of over the berries. I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. So the great berry deposits are all the way up here. Obviously, we're going to take control of that in due time. But for the time being, yeah, we're not going to go too heavy on this. I don't think it's too necessary. Maybe once we're actually doing, you know, different types of clothing. But for the time being, I think we should be fine. And the Forager Hut in general, shouldn't you be having? Yeah, okay, there you go. Why were you so confused about this? Well, who knows? All right, and then these locations right here, they're going to have a bit of a bigger backyard just because there is no resistance in the back. Oh, and he's claiming Eiche now. Oh, okay, so... We are now closing it. This will be Eiche now. After that, there will only be two neutral territories. And then it is me against him. We are going to start clashing. That is why, yet again, we need to... Yeah, and you know, honestly, this is a huge farming area. But I kind of like it. We're getting more and more efficient. We're going to have plenty of oxen. And of course, the farmhouses will be fully staffed. I think this should be workable. We'll, we'll see how it goes, okay? But the point being, yeah, we need a military industry. I need to build some, you know, the actual smithy right here. I think we already placed him. The idea here, very simply put, is of course that the smithy will be a central element of this particular village. Uh, we are not great, just for the record, when it comes to uh, iron production. I mean to say, basically, we have zero, and most importantly, we don't even have a great deposit. I think, and this is the big, big part that we're walking towards here as well for sure, we're going to start hefty, hefty import-exporting stuff. And I think for starters, I'm mostly going to import the iron. Um, it's just not worthy enough. If we can sell enough and we are producing so much, of course, in agricultural goods, then we should be able to clear that up. And as we are now building up this town, I'm actually going to clear out a couple of the trees in the iron. I like those. This is a nice separation between the marketplace and the church. Maybe eventually we will get rid of it, but... These are just too many trees. Uh, I'm gonna try to... That looks okay. Is is that okay? Oh yeah, look at that. We have a nice little separation. Once more, the church is embedded in trees. But then we have this open space. Uh, 
I'm going to keep this for the time being, this pasture here, but we may replace it eventually with something else. Obviously, we're going to clear out these trees as we go, as we keep building up this village. But yeah, you can see now civilization basically coming in. Oh, and I think I've accidentally placed this farmer's house in the wrong direction, but honestly... I like the look of it. I mean, just imagine this, right? You are a traveler, you are a merchant, and you come in and you see this gorgeous, gorgeous farmhouse. It definitely makes it so that, you know, oh, settlement level increase. There you go, because we kept up uh, upgrading houses. We got a new development point. But yeah, as you can see, this makes it so that we have a bit of an isolated location right here, meaning the Angerdorf does not immediately jump into your face. Huh. Well, this was an accident, but I will definitely take it. All right, so let's connect this farmhouse. Oh, and it's just perfect. Let's connect it directly here to the path. And yeah, that is indeed cute. What an accident. But hey, sometimes accidents can work out as well. Now, let's make sure that you can also actually use a plowing station. I should have done that. Uh, after I've actually assigned the people and the work radius, that's fine. Let's build this up as soon as possible. And then we can actually start planting here as well. I'm noticing, I think this is the population of Kaza that's coming over here already doing the work despite me telling them not to do that uh thanks all right but let's take a look at the new development point that we just unlocked first of all the next one will only become available once we unlock level three burgage plots which might take some time so let's not get too heated about that now the other thing is that these you know whatever we unlock here is only per region we already talked about this in the past but essentially it means that we unlock this stuff and specialize our region as we go and we will only get a maximum of six. Yes, that is right. You heard that right. Of six development points per region. Which means I want to be pretty specific about what we're doing here. Ah, if we're going to be trading a lot, this could be good. Effectively reducing all import prices by 10. That is huge. Okay. Uh, I don't think, yeah, I don't think this down there is for us at all. Um, I don't think this is for us at all, quite frankly. I've basically stopped hunting anyway. Hmm. I think we're going to go with uh, sheep breeding. And we're going to start setting up an actual sheep economy right about now. Rye cultivation, honestly, in this location means nothing to us. I don't even think we need it. Irrigation sounds okay. Uh, this also sounds fine. Let's go with sheep breeding and I think next we're going to pick up bakeries. The communal oven is fine. It works just fine. But obviously the bakery specialization will be perfect for us later. I'm going to go with sheep breeding here so that I can go ahead. We can then put these sheep on these fields and from there I can actually start importing them. And my god, I will be importing a ton of them. Oh, you know what? I'm noticing this now. I believe that as long as you are a farmhouse, you can be plowing any field on the map, but you're not going to put any seeds in. Look at the sowing progress zero. They are not working these at all. I'm thinking this might be very convenient and it's basically what did indeed happen. There was a huge element to sharing equipment, to sharing animals and so on in the medieval economy here, in the agriculture in particular. And that is so nice. Kazritz is essentially helping the new settlers. It's, you know, a village to village uh, aid that would most certainly come with some kind of obligation. But yeah, take a look at that. They are only using, well, the oxen that they have in Kazritz, but they are not really in responsibility or they don't have the responsibility here to also put out the seeds, use their own seeds or whatever. Uh, that will come as soon as they finish building up this farmhouse. Oh, and here we finally go. Let's assign the people. Now, let me take a look at this. Does it assign a ton of people that live elsewhere that is the biggest question that i have in that case i will be reassigning it i will be microing this but i will be doing all of that off camera just so that we basically have very short workways you can do this if you are playing the game you know at any given point you can do this by selecting this right here reassign family to a different workplace and then you can assign them very very nearby in this case this is the house of the locator this one obviously works in the mill perfectly reasonable indeed now with this farmhouse uh, i'm just gonna make sure yep indeed you're gonna have one oxen and then on top of that, uh, let's give you just, oh god, it, it is huge, don't get me wrong here, but I'm going to give you this entire territory, and then the farmhouse up here is going to slightly share it. It's going to overlap like roughly like this. They will work in unison, they will have a good time as well, or else, uh, fear my wrath, okay? And there you go. This is now the first time that they are actually working their own fields, that they are doing hard labor to create their very, very own Hopefully sustainable village. And we're doing fine, just for the record, when it comes to everything here. We could have more fuel production, and I think we are going to do this. Uh, oh, yeah, look at that. The, the, the actual foresters here are doing a great job at replenishing this forest. Where is my woodcutter? There they are. Yeah, you know what? Let's hire a new one. We only have one builder right now. It should be okay. 
either way, it is what it is. Um, for the time being, we just need more and more people to move in. I might actually, quite frankly, you know what? Let's stop with the taxation for just one second, okay? Let's stop with both the influence, because we don't really need more influence to claim more land. There's nothing of interest. And let's stop with the land tax. Obviously, we're going to go down just in general. Because, well, these level 2 locations don't have everything fulfilled. We need to upgrade the church, we need to upgrade, you know, the actual tavern consumption here. Which does remind me as well, uh, much like down in the other village, I really want a malt house. Because this malt house will be there to essentially make sure, you know what, I'm going to place you... Snap to roll, please. I'm going to place you right here. That is perfect. This malt house will make sure that our tavern here can actually have some supply. That sounds good to me. All right, so we now have the malt house being worked. And I have big, big plans. Now, in this video, my big plan here primarily is to actually get the uh, brewery stuff going, right? We want to go ahead and actually get that working. Now, not all of these are functional. I think this over here, yeah, they have backyards. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and turn you into a brewery. The idea of this particular brewery is that you are responsible for this village right here. If I move all the way over here, uh, the malt house should have already been built. Yes, there it is. I'm gonna put... Ah, oh God, they haven't arrived yet, have they? Is there... If there's somebody in here? That's a baker. Okay, you work in your local city. I need to find an unemployed person down here. I know we're gonna have one soon. It's just nobody has moved in there. And then we're also going to produce the malt house right there. The idea with this is that they will be producing beer that will primarily be landing in this beautiful tavern right here. I will then create one single level to housing down there. They will be creating their own beer. They of course have their own fields, their own barley and their own malt house. And then we are in a good spot when it comes to that. After that, and this is something I think maybe for the tail end of this video or for the next video, I'm not entirely certain, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look towards the proper economy that will come with this. I have a lot of flax coming, so the tailor's workshop is actually quite reasonable here. We are definitely looking towards producing warbows here, I think that will be very important. We can also produce shoes, no issue whatsoever, but this one right here is a big one. So I want to focus and I want to put these down just right away. These are the first productions. We have a brewery right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put one joiner's workshop because this is necessary for wooden parts and shields, and I'm a big fan of this, and then over here, we're going to be putting down... Well, now I'm confused. Should I make a blacksmith or should we just not bother? Um, How much... Do I have any flax lying around right now? No flax? Right, and we don't even have a workshop. So flax isn't coming this year, which means it is not urgent for me to actually produce either of these. So we're just gonna go. You know what? Yeah, let's make this into a warbo workshop. Do we have one more? Oh, we totally do not. I, I would have to upgrade you, which I might... Mind you, but you know what, if we have a current building that I can upgrade like this, then that would be amazing. It just doesn't seem to be the case. Okay, in that case, we're not going to put in a blacksmith just yet. Instead, we're going to rely on this smithy being built together, by the way, uh, with this. Let's just up those. I would like to place them in this video. All right, and we have now built all three of these upgrades. Let's take a look at them in person, but first of all, let's analyze whether we have to do anything with them. This right here is the brewery. It works on its own. Obviously, currently, it can't do anything. In 23 days, we're going to start harvesting an immense amount of barley, at which point that barley will then be turned into malt, and then, of course, it comes here into the brewery. So, there are some additional steps involved, but we're definitely just going to get there automatically. On the other hand, we have the joiner's workshop right here and here we have to decide what we want to do honestly i'm not sure what these what these wooden parts actually do um yeah i'm not certain about that so i will currently focus on the large shields because these large shields are used for the unit that we already have with which is the spear militia we already have a ton of them we mostly need more spears but it's always nice to have some overproduction and then the fletcher um i also okay so we don't give them any command they will be dealing with them that on their own but first of all let's take a good look at these buildings these are not just level two buildings i mean that's not the first of them we got some level two buildings over there including of of course the locator more importantly these are our first artisans and i seem to have selected this building making it so that you are highlighted good for you this lady is one of our very first artisans anyway uh, let's take a look at these buildings first of all i mean my god you see these shutters these medieval shutters right there there's even a glass window there oh that is luxurious then over here we have a completely different building style look at the top of the house in particular a teeny tiny window that leads all the way up to the attic and then of course down here these gorgeous glass windows as well my god these are some cute cute houses are you currently still being built 
I think this one might still be under construction. Oh, well, maybe they are redoing the uh, actual ceiling. And then right here, we have uh, whatever this is. I believe this is the, what, the, the bow maker, I think, right? Then over here, we have the shield maker. Let's take a quick gander at that. It looks like the very similar, if not the same setup. Can we see some working materials here? I, I don't think we can. Interesting. What about the brewery? Maybe the brewery has something more specific for us, but... Oh, yes, it does, actually. Look at that. What? All right, you know what? I am a bit confused. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but is this not an oven? Is, is this not like a, a bakery acid? Maybe it's a bug or something. But okay, so we have in the backyard now this particular thing. And this is an interesting topic, by the way, as well. First of all, obviously, we are still very much in a village. This is not a town. This is just a village. But it is a village with artisans. And these artisans right here have their work in the backyard. They basically have it at home. And that's actually, indeed, very, very accurate. Now, the interesting and important thing to note here is that these people would still be involved in the local agriculture of the village. It's just, since they can do, you know, alternative services, they can render services that are not accessible to a normal peasant, they would, for example, get more of the harvest. That is one of those arrangements that would be made. So, they do their services for the village, they sell, for example, their beer, etc., etc., they get more grain and then bring that grain to, indeed, the mill, where it gets ground into flour. We make some money off as the local lord, and indeed, the locator would also make some money as the, well, locator. But these artisans have a special position. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? They are taking more of the harvest, and the harvest is the product of any given village in this time period. Long gone are the days where, basically, subsistence farming would mean that you are doing everything. You are producing your own clothing, you are producing your own food, your own tools, and so on. These are specialized jobs, and that is a huge step in any economy. These artisans right here will be kings of the future because they are the very first glimpse into a future where specialized economies are the most important thing in the world. And my god, I really, really love their buildings. Ooh, and there is the smithy. Now, this is an interesting question. Let me employ somebody here. I hope somebody local. Yep, that is perfect. Doesn't need to walk all that much. Can I tell the smithy what to produce? I don't think I have that power. Okay, so first of all, this smithy right now, let's just kick this person out again, is somewhat useless since we do not have any iron. Uh, I think we're only going to start producing this in the very, very next episode. So, you know, tomorrow, basically. But this smithy, nonetheless, is, with a very good reason, a quintessential part of this town. It is a part of the Angerplatz. So, I really have to say, by the way, I love this asset. This is such a beautiful, beautiful asset. And these smithies, just as, you know, to mention it, would historically, indeed, be in the center of the village. Because... This is where you go if you have to fix something. This is where you go if there's something important going on. It is a quintessential building. And obviously this quite, you know, it has some value right here as well. This is a very, very specialized equipment forge for sure. Especially compared to, you know, whatever else is going on. Now don't get me wrong here. Farming is also very tool intensive, especially in this period. We have it with a plow, of course. We have it with other specialized instruments. But everything hinges on this particular smithy actually working. We're so glad that we have it again. We're not actually producing uh, neither any ceramics, nor are we producing any iron. That will change, I think, in the upcoming episode. For now, we've mostly pointed ourselves towards, uh, you know, creating more and more artisans, creating more and more level 2 houses. It has to be said, gameplay-wise, this is an interesting, interesting challenge, because the artisans that work right here cannot work any other jobs. So the joiner's shop exclusively does this. They don't actually work in any other building, they don't do anything else. And that's important because it means we have more population, more mouths to feed, and they're not actually fulfilling any of the jobs that are around. So let's keep that in mind, uh, lest we may run out of the potential to do anything. The berry deposits are gone now as well. Uh, I think it is partially to do with me just, you know, ripping out the trees, but don't worry about it too much. Honestly, the berries are the least of my worry. We have over 200 or almost 200. That is quite significant. And there you go, the harvest has begun, both down here and up there, and speaking of up there, by the way, so this actually didn't really do much because I didn't put anybody in there, we need more population yet, but don't worry about it too much, um, we're just gonna put a couple of more workers in here, and that should secure the harvest, at least here, and then of course over there, I don't think we even, 
Yeah, we didn't even put anything in the ground here. It's completely fine. Now, as we are harvesting, let's actually make sure that somebody's working here. It would be great if they were local down in the city, but that's fine. You can go down there. They are currently importing livestock. And this will now be our very first sheep. This will be indeed... Oh, look at that. Oh, I love the asset. Oh, my God. A shepherd. This will be the start of not just our fields, but also of the actual animal keeping. Animal husbandry will become a big part, and I think uh, we may call this something related to that, you know, oxen, or maybe uh, related to the sheep that we are about to import. We are going to become a massive, massive food supply hub in this particular region. And my god, look at that. It's such... Ah, this game is so, so pretty. Oh, and look at that. They are fast about producing warbows. Jesus Christ. Uh, how many are you, are you just producing endlessly then? Unless I, unless I tell you to stop existing, I guess, or to do something else. Wow, we already now have six warbows. We will be having plenty of archers, I guess. That is, that is awesome. So basically, the warbow stuff is already paying off. The, uh, the shields not really doing all that much yet, eh? There's, there's not a lot going on there. I don't see any stored, but maybe that will soon come. Oh, or maybe you've already taken... Oh, yeah, look at that. We already have 30 out of 36. We are in full swing. The next topic now will be to just actually produce weaponry. Oh, yeah, look at that. That was a pretty good harvest. We have a ton of wheat. We have some flax from somewhere. <laughs> not entirely sure. And we have a good amount of barley. And this malt house... Oh, there you... It's already happening. Okay. Let's take a quick gander at that. What does your work actually look like? Oh, that is so awesome. I love the love and care put into... Oh. <laughs> Alright, I still love the love and care put into that. You can see the exact mechanism here with the fire with the heat underneath. And she has done such a great job. And this will now be the actual very start of our very own first beer production. Can you imagine this? The Germans arrive and immediately beer has begun being brewed. Ah, and oh my god, this is such a pretty sight right here. We really have a great, great spot for this village. And oh my god, the village looks so cute. I cannot get over this. This game just really has a knack to be pretty. No matter what you do, I think. And look at that. All three of the brewery are transporting. Nickel, Andreas and Dorothea are all bringing the stuff they need into the brewery and I gotta, I gotta watch them work here because I'm pretty sure that right there is a bakery oven. Uh, again, probably just like a confused asset, but I'm just saying, okay? Show me the work you're doing, pal. What are, what are you actually, what are you up to here? I'm not a brewer. I've never made beer. I, I have a brewer friend, but that's about it. I think there should be like... A container there. Are you seeing this? Yeah, I think we're I think we're encountering a bug here. It's unfortunate. But okay, fair enough. Yeah, this is clearly the wrong asset that has been built. This guy is confused, but he's trying. And most importantly, I think he is going to be producing some alcohol here. And after that, I will put a tavern worker in there. Ah, the Germans have indeed arrived. All right, folks, let's take a look at that. Uh, I'm already going to put these down. Actually, what I'm going to do is... No, I think this is fine, actually. We're going to pull this all the way over here. And then go down there. Boom. There you go. Beautiful. We're going to settle four folks there. Quite the big plot, honestly. Uh, and then I want to keep a little bit of a gap here. I would like a path in this direction. There you go. Perfect. And then after that, we can continue with normal burgage plots. There we go. Because this will be... Oh, well, rather, we are now quite close to this Angerdorf actually being complete. Look at that. Oh, my God. It's so... So good looking. And obviously, there is so much space for expansion right here. Ah, just, just gorgeous. And we do need to take care of this wooden church. We need to upgrade it here into a small stone church. We need to work on some clay before that. It's going to be winter now for the time being. Let me actually check it. We got a ton of barley. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we have a good amount of flour, a good amount of grain still. Obviously, yeah, we're doing fine here in our resources as well. I definitely think I want to upgrade our... Uh, our production in the backyards. I, I have a couple of backyards here where we can do this. We also now have a very, very steady wool production. Huge fan. <laughs> I, I like that a lot. Okay, that is, that is really good right there. These sheep have great names. And you are now producing wool. And I guess that means I should actually put right next to you... Uh, where is it? We have a weaver workshop. Yeah, there you go. Workers use wool to produce yarn and flax to produce linen. Um, 
I'm gonna put this relatively nearby, right there. And that will be one of the last drops for the Slavic population down here. I did, by the way, go through the trouble of renaming every last one with an authentic Sorbian name. Huge, huge fan. I, I love this little village right here. Uh, obviously, we are also up here now in a really good position. These fields are being worked. The mill is indeed also being worked. Like I said, we have a ton of resources just lying around now. Also plenty of firewood. I think we are overall doing really, really well. And we are now also, it must be said, producing weaponry. Uh, I can actually create, boom, there you go, a squad of archers. And these archers now will, of course, need more bows, but they're definitely getting there. The next big thing for us here is to produce some spears in the smithy. We're going to start, or rather, we are going to do this completely in the next episode. Uh, I think in the next episode, I'm going to set up our trade properly. So I'm going to set it up to a massive degree where we are starting to import and export a ton of stuff. And we're also going to exploit what little iron and clay we have in this region. After which, I think we have produced what is essentially the new stronghold right here. This gorgeous, gorgeous village. And my god, it really turned out well. And we're not even quite done yet. Oh, and you know what? I almost forgot. It's already January now. The years are just passing us by. And I'm a huge fan of this. We are now prepared to indeed oppose a couple of people uh, with our weapons and so on. But off camera, I've even gone so far. Take a look at this. As renaming the population living right here with authentic historical Sorbian names. I absolutely love it. Hanska, we have Birich, we have... Rehor, I can't pronounce it correctly. My bad, I'm not too good at reading the transliteration there. But anyway, super, super cool that you can rename every individual pop. And my god, why did you folks not tell me to build this, you know, to actually purchase sheep earlier? Because this is just the cutest thing I've ever seen. When there is summer, we're going to come back and take a look at this. I really have to build up the fences on all of the other farms just so that we are in a position where we can see these sheep when we even just walk through the farming territory. Now, anyway, what I want to talk about from a history point of view before we dip today and then tomorrow dip really hard into, you know, weapons production and into expanding that kind of thing. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what it actually meant to be a soap, for example, during this period of the Ostsiedlung. The, uh, the time period when the Rundlinge were created was actually a very early part of the Ostsiedlung, and it was a part where the people settling these areas and taking them over, declaring themselves the new lords of them, despite of course there already being a population there, where there was actually a surprising degree of cooperation and indeed actually understanding. Now what I mean here is that we have different stages in the Ostsiedlung. This is a process that lasts for hundreds of years. People had different intentions, of course, and people had different goals. Now, I'm gonna be straightforward with you. Again, the Rundlinge come from a very early period. This kind of design and this kind of, kind of just summarizing, like the local population that spread out in very sparsely uh, settled, tinier villages, this kind of thing was done so early where you were basically dependent on them. What I mean here is that these Rundlinge were mostly inhabited by free Slavic populations. Now, don't get me wrong here. This freedom wasn't gifted to them. They were free before the Germans arrived. This is how feudalism starts. It's the funniest thing. Uh, before the aristocracy comes to you, you just live on the land and you just own the land and that's just how things go. And then, then the aristocracy comes and says, well, maybe that land is actually mine. Now, this population right here actually normally, and I say normally because obviously there are always different cases, enjoyed a ton of privileges. The reason for this is, since they were already here, since they knew the land, since they knew how to actually work the land and so on, they were the biggest, biggest aid for the German lords to cultivate the land. When we talk about the village over there, you can see their windmill in this beautiful distance. We're talking about settlers that don't really know this land, that have no idea what is going on and that are, you know, coming after an arduous journey after having been advertised to. These populations living in the Rundlinge essentially made deals with the German lords, where the German lords said, OK, you can remain freemen. You can remain in a position where your property rights, your inheritance rights, and all that stuff, and even your justice uh, rights, will indeed be respected. And in return, all I ask you to do is, you know, for example, to cut down the forest over there so that my settlers can settle. These deals were made and were largely respected as well. I bring this up because obviously this was not a question of separation where, for example, the German, Germans were saying you have to live over there. It was rather just a new settlement form that was established. Sometimes, obviously, again, we don't know it for every case. There was violence involved. And this is no surprise to anybody that knows authoritarian systems. That's what feudalism is. 
However, at the same time, Rundlinge often also enjoyed a lot of freedoms and privileges due to, well, the power that they had in unsettled territory. You know, in the territory not yet settled by the Germans. Now, my point here essentially is that all of this kind of started out with the Rundlinge actually having a lot of rights. It started out where the Rundlinge effectively Take a look at that. We can see their mill right there. There it is. Oh, it's, it's just so such a beautiful game. Where they started out with their own justice system. Now that's not a surprise. If you lived in a village, there's not really your count coming down if somebody stole some of your bread. That is handled inside of the community. In the Holy Roman Empire in particular, actually, small fun fact, you really only called on, for example, your lord if it was a crime that was so heinous that, well, it may have, you know, the punishment of death or other bodily harm, that kind of stuff. Because that kind of punishment could only be dished out by the local lord. They were basically in a position where they had a privilege and the authority to maintain that privilege indeed. Now, other than that, though, they were rather autonomous. And like I said, they were largely freemen. The same is actually pretty much true even for the German settlements that then were, of course, indeed created after the land had been cultivated on a very basic level. These German settlements were settled by people that came here willingly, at least largely. This made it so, well, if you want somebody to come, I mentioned this in a previous episode as well, you gotta give them some incentives. And one of the big incentives was that you might actually be owning the land that you're working on, that you are not a serf, that you do not own, and that you do not owe serf, you know, uh, civility, where you essentially, for example, have to go on your uh, uh, lord's fields and work those fields for nothing in return. No, you might have been a free man here as well. This was something that combined these two villages. It's, it's super interesting because you have one part here that is completely new. The Germans are freshly moving in, but because of how things are, the Sorbians actually also enjoy a lot of privileges. Now, first of all, this is a gorgeous looking Anger. I absolutely love how this has turned out so far. And I'm only, I really can only say I'm looking forward to continuously work on this. Uh, I think this will become the center of this particular region right here. We're not yet quite done. If we go after this, of course, this church needs to be turned into a stone church. Uh, down there we have uh, not yet built buildings. All of these are still level one. We can upgrade so much here. But yeah, this is a cute, gorgeous village. I'm actually super happy about the pasture here as well. We have retained all of these trees. I think they look great. But anyway, what we now need to understand is that this has high autonomy. This is effectively what happens in medieval settlement. To move people around, you largely do it by giving them these kind of incentives. Now, after that, and we're now talking 1400, 1500, 1600 and so on, we see a fight that steadily happens, that steadily occurs throughout the Middle Ages. Uh, Chris Wickham, a renowned historian, writes some uh, super cu uh, cool books about the general topic of medieval society, about Italian, North Italian society in general as well. Uh, he's a, uh, an expert on that for sure. He wrote in particular, and I'm, I'm somewhat misquoting him here because it's not verbatim, but basically what he said is that most fights, most struggles between the local population and the overlord can actually be basically traced back to the idea that the overlord is trying to take away privileges. The constant erosion of privileges, of what makes a man free, of what makes a man a serf, whether you are born into it, how inheritance works in general, and so on, is something that was constantly being attacked. This erosion is quintessential to the Middle Ages. And we see this here as well. When the Germans that settled here, and when the Sorbians started out as freemen, this status eroded further and further and further. Now, that doesn't mean that they necessarily came in and micromanaged you. For example, this is a very important element to the Sorbian colonization in particular. Uh, the Sorbians only in rare cases were forbidden from speaking their language altogether. How would, you, how would you administrate any of this, right? How would you micromanage any of this? And what is the value of it? In the Middle Ages period, basically, the lords were happy if the land was worked and if, well, the people living on it were quiet and didn't rebel. And really micromanaging, forbidding rights and all that stuff is exactly how you get people to not be quiet. But that doesn't stop the erosion of rights. And obviously, and I want to point this out because very much did this uh, happen, the Sorbian population obviously got a bit of a rougher deal here than the German population. Yes, both of their rights after the initial set uh, settlement period was over were being eroded. However, well, yeah, for example, once we had more sophisticated systems around uh, justice, so once we had, for example, in proper towns, actual uh, judges and actual court systems, Sorbian, for example, was forbidden as a court language. We have far more extreme examples, just for the record, 
The Sorbian colonization is just one way of how all of this went. The Rundlinge were not prisons or anything like this, but ultimately, of course, the privileges were being revoked and the Sorbians would get hit harder than the local Germans. But when we, for example, look at the colonization done by the Teutons, uh, so the Teutonic Order against the Polish, that was an entirely different affair. There was never a period there where the Teutonic Order tried to make compromises, tried to work something out with the local popul uh, population, leave them privileges and so on. Yeah, it was a completely different topic. The Teutonic Order was an unbelievable force of basically a very heinous approach towards the local and native population. It's so interesting to talk about this because, well, obviously, yes, it is a form of colonization, but it considers different things. For the Germans here, in particular in the early uh, period here, when we talk about Brandenburg, when we talk about Saxony and so on, we are mostly talking about people that care that you A, are quiet and B, are Catholic. Those are the two major requirements. And as long as that works, yeah, your Rundling can be free. Sometimes in that Rundling, there would be Germans living there. And sometimes in the new German settlements, there would be Sorbs living there. There was an incredible uh, amalgamation, you know, a, a combination of different cultures going on there. And of course, again, like I said, the rights would deteriorate as we went. But for the time being, and since we have just settled this area very freshly, I think it is pretty safe to assume that both our new settlers and our original settlers that then made the new settlers even possible. And by the way, look at this granary. Um, it has this beautiful ladder that makes sure that no rats and stuff can break in to eat our reserves. I, I really like these details that they have here. Man, this is just such a beautiful game. But anyway, my point being, in the current state, the Manor Lord has just moved in. This is still a very young uh, authority position right here in this particular region. I think it is very fair to assume that both the new settlers and the Slavic settlers that we have kind of role-played into the position here actually have a lot of rights. The more we urbanize, though, yeah, I think it is safe to assume that, you know, if we follow history, those rights will be eroded. It's a super interesting topic. Just because, well, yeah, that's history. I'm so glad that Manor Lords really leans into the history angle right here so that we can think about this stuff and can consider what the implications are there. This is such an interesting topic to me because, well, we can think about it, we can talk about it, and there's just so much there to consider. Like I said, this was only an overview of something that happened in one particular period and one particular region. But it has to be said in general, yeah, there would be many, many rights afforded to the already existing population until much like what feudalism just does, they began to be eroded. Let me... Are you seeing something? Is this like the, the farmhouse over there? Is that the church? What am I seeing here? Let me let me take a gander at this, right? From this particular position, right near the manor, what are we actually seeing? Yes, that is the farmhouse. Look at that. That is so cute. We can actually see that. I am super, super happy with what we have built here. And I'm very much looking forward to spinning this yarn further to build more towns as they are desired, as they are needed. And of course, to, well, start exploiting them and pushing down on them with the taxes. Either way, tomorrow we are going to continue and we are going to make a massive, massive step. Because, well, it is time to mine. It is time to potentially finish this settlement, at least in its initial iteration. And then my greedy eyes are looking into the east. We will have pelts, we will have more iron, we will have infinite clay, and I think we can have a cute little settlement here. I'm not sure whether we will actually found this in the next episode, maybe the episode thereafter. I think in this one we will just, you know, kind of work on completing what we have right here. At least when it comes to the proper hub here, you know, the, the center of our population. And just look at it, by the way. It's, it's so nice to see this right here. Such a different shape. This one's so cut off from the King's Road. This one's so very well connected. These layouts tell stories. Anyway, I'm going to leave you right here and I will see you later, alligator. <laughs>